Good morning. Heavenly Father, I ask that you bless this video, that it reaches who it needs to reach, that the words that come out of my mouth don't don't lead anybody astray, but lead them towards you in a better relationship with you. In Jesus' heavenly and holy name I pray. Amen. Um, yesterday, small, short video about watching what you feed yourself. I think I need to go into a little bit more of that because while none of us are perfect, and I do mean none of us, we do have to watch what we feed ourselves, our souls. I mean, if you run around feeding your soul a bunch of nonsense, you know, you're going to be about that nonsense. You know, back in the day when I was younger, I used to, I used to listen to gangster rap, you know, uh, listen to groups like I listen to Too Short, I listen to E-40, occasionally I listen to Two Live Crew, as raunchy as they were, I enjoyed it. You know, I listen to that kind of stuff because I lived that kind of lifestyle. I don't live that lifestyle anymore. I want nothing to do with that lifestyle anymore. I don't want to, I don't listen, you know, I used to listen to music that was, you know, a lot of womanizing going on where, you know, you sleep with as many girls as you possibly can. And doesn't matter, you get them pregnant, so what? Luckily for me, I didn't have to worry about that. But, you know, but it was what I was feeding my soul. It was what I was feeding the spirit on a daily basis. And I got to be honest with you, you really can't. You can't do that and, and be able to have a right relationship with God. You can't. It's absolutely impossible. Because where you've got that, that carnal feeding into your spirit, what do you do? how are you feeding God? How are you feeding your spirit with God? You know, are you reading your Bible on a daily basis? Some people, man, I'll tell you what, they know the Bible pretty well, but I promise you, you ain't seen them crack it open. Maybe if they go to church, they might crack it open, but, you know, in reality, they don't. And you can know what the Bible says all day long, but unless you're reading the word on a daily basis, you're not feeding yourself properly. Now, I've made a point in my life, you know, I haven't always been successful, but, you know, the music I listen to, if I can control what comes in my ears, I want nothing to do with any kind of secular or carnal music. I, I absolutely want nothing to do with it. I don't want it. I won't play it in my car. <laughs> and that is absolute fact right there. Um you know, back in the day, I, you know, when I was married to my first wife in the car, I, I would listen to sports radio and a lot of that kind of stuff. No, you know, the last car I had, I listened to nothing but Christian music. I didn't want anything else. I didn't want to feed myself just, you know, mainly because a lot of the music nowadays is just stupid. I mean, I've listened to rap music you know, here and there, because people I know listen to it, but the lyrics are stupid. Nobody understands what, listen, just because you can make a bunch of stuff rhyme don't mean it makes any sense. And I have issues with that. I've always had issues with that. I guess that's why I like guys like Kumo D and uh, LL Cool J back in the day, because, man, them guys were lyricists. They, they told you a story. Nowadays, you know, I hear I've heard a lot of this stuff and they're rapping about all the money and the bling they got because you bought their music. Hmm. Seriously, that's what it's all about. You know, how much money I got, how much bling I got, how many women I slept with, you know, last week. What? And then I want to and then you listen to them when they get up there on a on stage and accept some award. Oh, thank God. Man, what? God ain't got nothing to do with what you're doing. He don't. I promise you, if your music ain't edifying and glorifying God, 
He ain't got nothing to do with it. Not even a little bit. The movies that we watch, and I'm, listen, this is one that I struggled with because I like certain I like certain types of movies. I'm an action guy. I like action movies, you know, the bloodier the better. <laughs> I just I've always been that way. But what are you feeding your spirit? I mean seriously, I mean nowadays um I I watch sports. I still watch sports. I'm I'm I still enjoy watching football and baseball. I don't care for basketball anymore. Too many steps. Um and went to that European three-step thing. That's not basketball. That's just wrong. Anyway, um, I watch the occasional movie. I don't watch movies that are... I don't watch movies that glorify sin, if you know what I mean. You know, you got movies out there that, you know, they want to show you this gangster lifestyle or, you know... Um, any movie I think that that would glorify sin or would take away from the glory of God in my life I, I can't feed that to myself you know if I'm watching something on TV and you know half naked chicks show up I got to leave the room I have to leave the room I can't, I can't introduce that into my soul into my spirit it has no place you know, seeing an, because obviously that woman is not my wife and seeing another man's wife half naked or naked or doing something she shouldn't be doing with another man just because it's acting on TV. I cannot feed myself that stuff. And I know a lot of people, they don't eh, it's no big deal to them, but man, that stuff creeps in and creeps in. And then next thing you know, you're doing something you definitely ain't supposed to be doing. And I, I just I'm not I can't do that. You know, I have daughters, and I don't want to see another man's daughter half naked unless it's my wife. And then I'm not looking at her as another man's daughter. I'm looking at her as my wife. I currently do not have a wife, so there will be none of that going on. I just think, you know, this is something that's been pressed into me because God's had to create this this drive and this striving to to seek righteousness. Am I righteous? No. Did I sin yesterday? I don't I don't I don't think I did. You know, I don't I don't remember doing anything that was sinful. Um have I sinned this morning? So far not yet. Will I sin today? I don't know. I'm gonna try not to. But that's my goal. My goal is to do what God's called me to do, to feed the spirit. And listen, feeding the spirit's not just about, you know, the music, the T V, the books that you read. You know, the nonsense that you look at on the Internet. God is not political. So let's get that straight right now. Ain't no need to be political. I'm not. A, I don't I don't belong to any political party. I am a Christian. I don't care about nothing. I have my views. I know what the Bible says. So I don't feed myself that nonsense. <clears throat> Do I pay attention to what's going on in the world? Yes. But does that define who I am? No, because the world can go to hell all it wants. I'm not. I have no desire to go to hell. You know, in James 4, 4, it says, do not love the sinful things of this world. Well, most of what the world wants to do is sinful. Hence the music that they listen to. It doesn't edify. It doesn't glorify God. And that was our entire purpose for being put on this earth is to glorify God. So in what you're doing, are you glorifying God in what you're listening to, what you're watching? You know, so you used to be a certain way back in the day. Well, once you get saved, you ain't supposed to be that way. No, because you're a new man. You have to put off the things of the old man. You can't be, you know, you can't be like the rest of the world. You have to be set apart. You have to be set apart. You cannot do the things that the world does. You truly want to serve God and, and and you truly love Jesus, then you're not going to want to do those things or pay attention to those things that you paid attention to, uh, paid attention to in the past. I'm not perfect by any means. No stretch of the imagination am I perfect. But my goal in this life 
is to do what God called me to do. And I can't do that feeding myself things that aren't of God. And my, you know, it's not easy. Trust me, it's not easy. You got, you know, how many years you're on this planet that you were doing all these things. You got to do that. But the step is, in the morning, the first thing you should do, thank God that you're awake, that he gave you another day. But the one thing you should do above anything in all things is first thing in the morning, you get in your word. Doesn't matter. Just even if you start off with one chapter, start. Because it'll lead to another chapter and another chapter and another chapter. I don't care if you know the Bible. I don't care if you read it before. Read it again. Read it every day. Because I took the time. I took some time off on Saturday. I didn't do, do, do any video. I didn't do anything. You know, I did read a little bit in the morning, but I didn't read, you know, like I have been. And I felt it about mm, third of them away through my day. I started feeling, you know, that flesh creeping up on me, you know, talking to me. Hey, hey, hey. But. No, I'm, I'm I'm okay. I don't want to do that. You know, had a guy on the internet uh, last night told me I look like a bee. <laughs> okay, whatever, dude. Um, you know, the old me, I, I'd have told that dude where he could have met me. And we could have handled it like men. I got no problem with that. But I have grown so much in, in the Word of God and in, in the role that I'm supposed to have that, you know, I did let the gentleman know that he was going to bite off more than he could chew. Um, whether you think I'm tough or not, I'm not the toughest guy on this planet, but I promise you, I'm not a pushover, not even a little bit. But God has made me somebody different. I'm not the violent young man I used to be. I'm not the guy that would punch you in the mouth even before you could get the words, I'm going to kick you behind, you know, because as soon as I heard I'm going to kick, I, man, I would punch somebody in the mouth. Oh, you just threatened me. Okay, let's go. I'm not like that anymore. You know, I did tell the gentleman, you know, may God bless you to know the truth um, before he rebukes you. And let's be honest, the Lord will rebuke us if we are not, if we don't strive and we don't, you know, because I, I think this way. If you truly love God, you truly believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, you're going to put away those things. You're, you're just going to. You're not going to you're not going to entertain those certain aspects of your life anymore. And because a lot of things, you know, I don't I can't smoke pot anymore. I can't. It hinders my relationship with God. Did it make me do wild and crazy things? You know, that whole gateway nonsense that I've heard so much about? No. I didn't do heroin, didn't do meth, didn't do coke. I didn't want none of that stuff. You know, luckily for me, I grew up with two uncles. One was an alcoholic. Well, both were alcoholics, and but one was an extra special junkie on top of that because he did coke and whatever else he could get his freaking hands on. And those guys weren't very nice when I was growing up. So I didn't want to be like that. I, I don't even like to drink. You won't see me drink much. You know, I might have an occasional beer here and there, but I really don't care for alcohol. Mainly because if you drink too much of it, you lose control of yourself. And I, I got control issues and I don't like to lose control of myself. I, I like to be able to be in control of, of what I'm doing, what I'm thinking or how I am. So I don't do those things. And besides, I think wine's disgusting, but that's just because I'm not a big alcohol guy. Just don't care for it. It's not my thing. And notice I'm not putting any Bible verses in here except for the James 4 4. It's because it's it's you've gotta you've gotta pray. You've gotta go, okay, Lord, I know I'm not doing right. Help me discover what it is you want me to be doing instead of what I am doing. And if the things that I am doing aren't in line or don't glorify you then how do i get how do i change those 
because unless you do these things, you're going to be you're going to be keep repeating the same cycles. And trust me, I know from experience, I repeated the same dadgum cycle for the last 20 years. And then finally, you know, with the help of some some individuals. Um, to help get my mindset right, you know, because let's be honest, you know, when you have when you grow up and, and you know, one of your parents isn't uplifting. It can really tear you down. It can really tear you up. Um, and then you don't have a true sense of your value. You know, that's happened. You know, I grew up that way. Oh, I know who I know who I am now. I, I know I'm valuable. You know, I used to smoke cigarettes. I used to chew uh, tobacco. And I got to be honest with you, I never thought I'd be able to quit. Not even a little bit. I just, I didn't think I would ever be able to quit. Because I just didn't think I could. Man, I quit cold turkey. I got so fed up one day with everything that it was just like, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. You know, I, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. Is smoking, was smoking pot fun for me? Yeah, I love that feeling, man. That feeling was great. But the overeating <laughs> was not healthy. The laziness, not healthy. Not healthy for my spirit, not healthy for my body. And I'm not built to... You know, I can't just eat whatever I want to eat and expect myself not to gain any weight because that's just not how it happens. You know, I've had to get back into working out again because I need to I need to glorify God in all aspects of my life, not just one, not just, you know, not just what I read, not just what I see, not just what I listen to. I, I need to glorify him in everything. So, yeah, exercising is important. Is it fun? Not at first, not after you ain't exercised in, 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 in a while. So got to deal with it, though. I'm, I got to deal with it because I'm the one that decided not to live accordingly. So there are some things that, you know, there are consequences to our actions. Whether we see them right now or not, there are consequences to all our actions. I just want everybody to understand. Don't let the devil trick you into thinking, oh, it's just this. It's okay. Because when when you, unless you shut the door and you have the proper uh, weather stripping on your door, that little, the little air, the breath of the devil can come into your house. And this, this body is the house of God, whether you think so or not. So make sure you've got the proper weather stripping on your door so the devil can't creep in. And what do you, how do you get the proper weather stripping? Well, you read your Bible, you pray, you feed yourself the things that you need to feed, you know, feeding Feeding your spirit, feeding your soul, the things of God <clears throat> will will bless you in ways that I don't think anybody ever really truly comprehends until they do it. You know, I have a peace. If I told you everything that was going on with me right now, you'd be like, yeah, okay. But I have a peace. I'm not, I'm not fearful of what's next. And it's been a long time since I've had peace like I got. You know, I was talking to my son last night, and I told him flat. I said, "Son, you know, I said I, I know if I died tonight, I would go to heaven." I said, I, "It's been a long time, you know, till I've been to that point." Because I'll be honest with you, there was many of the years since I got saved the first time. You know, when I first got saved, the first time when I first got saved, I didn't know how. You know. And, but then I wasn't living 
fully. You know, like I've said before, I was straddling that fence. I was on, I was, I was trying to be, live in the world and, and live with God, but you can't do that, man. You got to be one or the other. You cannot, you, you just can't, you can't live with God and run with the devil. You can't do it. If you're going to run with the devil, God ain't going to be with you. If you've been called or chosen, he, he'll, he'll keep you to a point. He'll keep you, you know, he'll keep nudging you and pushing you and, and getting you to go where he's, he called you to go. Yes. But you can't run with God and the devil at the same time. That ain't going to be good for nobody. You know, I'm, I'm very adamant about, you know, what I believe because I read the Bible and if it's in the Bible, then I believe it. That's because it's God's word. Yes, it was it was the inspired word of God, but you know God gave it to these men to write these words down, just like He gave it to Moses to write down the Ten Commandments. Okay, that's the same principle. God told them what to write, so they wrote it. And you can tell in 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 the Bible when you read it, you can tell when it was God saying it, or when it was that that person saying this. You know, not God, but I say, or I think, okay, that's fine. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. If you're reading the word of God and you're reading something that is not what it says, then you're not reading it properly. When you read your Bible, before you start reading, say, Lord, give me the spiritual understanding to know your words because is if we're reading the Bible and we're reading it according to our flesh, we're gonna twist it, we're gonna turn it, we're gonna make it like you'll make other Christians go, What? Huh? That don't make no sense. Just be careful what you feed yourself. Get in your word, read it on a daily basis. You know do as God says to do. Get that love, get that love of God deep in your heart. That way you can show that love to others. Are you always going to be perfect and do everything God wants you to do? No, but I pray that I do. You know, and I'm not saying, listen, you, you just, just read, feed yourself properly. You know, it's like going to the store and you're buying all these microwave dinners. That stuff's not healthy for you. You know what I mean? How much nonsense they got in those things? Read, read the ingredients one day. You'd be better off going home and, and making something from scratch. Oh, making stuff from scratch is so... No, it ain't. No, it ain't. It just takes a little bit of time. You know, don't overcook your food. Don't undercook your food. Cook your food properly. Make your food properly. Feed yourself properly. You know, you got to be careful. And I don't mean to, I, I, I can, listen, I could say this all day, every day. Watch what you feed yourself. Because when you feed yourself the things of this world, you're going to behave as though you're in the world. Whether you believe or not. You're still going to behave as if you're in the world and you, you just, you can't do that. There is no compromise with the word of God. Get in there and read it. If you can find where it says to compromise the word of God for somebody's feelings or somebody's, you know, um, to bless somebody, man, then I, prove it to me because I promise you it's not in there. God don't, God don't tell us to, you know, compromise who we are as Christians just because something, you know, we like to do. Be obedient. Don't do as you want to do. Do as God commands us to do. Be obedient. That's the, the biggest thing. That's what you'll learn when you're reading your Bible. When you get in your Bible every day and you take your carnal, fleshly self out of the equation, you'll understand. I'm very adamant about this. Unless you're reading your Bible... You're not feeding yourself properly. You're going to fall. You're going to, you're going to do things that you ain't supposed to be doing. You're not going to be obedient. And don't blame it on others. Don't blame it on this, that, or another. You, you know, take responsibility for what you've done and who you are and ask God to fix it. 
say, Lord, I don't want to be this way. I don't want to be this kind of man or, or this kind of woman. Show me how to be a godly man, how to be a godly woman. Show me how to seek righteousness and you will. Okay. Heavenly Father, I pray that whoever needed to hear this, hears this, whoever whoever needs this, Lord, receives this. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Remember, like, share, post your hate, post your love, you know, post whatever you feel like. I love you and may God bless you.